to the uh, sustainable energy team. Today we are testing out our new heating method for the termite group. So I came to Sustainable Energy to hook it up to their solar cells and see what temperature it would get to and how long it would take to get there. The pre-freshmen were divided into eight different research teams. Five teams conducted original research projects and three teams worked on support and development projects to send the five original research projects to the edge of space and back. From the perspective of being over the entire pre-freshman bridge summer science program, I have a unique advantage of talking to faculty and getting their feedback in terms of what's happening. What I get from working with the students is just an experience that is priceless. It allows me to mentor students, it allows the students to come into my lab and get a first time experience of actually learning how to do research at a college. And it also allows them to just expand their knowledge and learn new techniques in different areas and see what's available to them. To get young people turned on to science, and especially African Americans because we're underrepresented, uh, that gives me some self-satisfaction. It's a good thing. Uh, what I get from the students is seeing students learn, seeing students uh, challenged with a project and rising to the occasion to do that. Uh, I've enjoyed many years of working at Morehouse with the Upward Bound program. And while these were high school students, uh, I got to see students who were interested in learning, interested in science, and I enjoy teaching kids how science works. And it's rather interesting because when I approached the ones that are working with us down and said, we're going to send something to the edge of space and come back, and I showed them some pictures of the curvature of the earth, the black sky and everything, they got excited. They were like, wow, you mean we're going to slide, we can send something, our research up like that? So they actually came in with a zeal for it. And when the faculty has a zeal for it, needless to say, the students are going to feel that passion. The students are going to feel that, that energy, which is beyond what a faculty would normally have just in teaching. So why are we going to Wyoming? Last year we went to the Mojave Desert. Basically speaking, we try to find locations that when the balloon goes up, it comes back down. It doesn't come down in a populated area, if you will. I'm a little concerned about that because uh, the jet stream uh, is different in one area to another area. Uh, right now, the jet stream is not the problem in Wyoming. It's uh, surface winds. And the surface winds are such that it would produce a very prolonged launch flight uh, if we were to uh, launch at this particular point, like today. Uh, so we, we're kind of concerned. We want to go to 100,000 feet, but if the uh, balloon gets pushed several hundred miles away, we may end up in the mountains of Colorado and can't recover the balloon. The next reason why, uh, for Wyoming is we look for partners that can help defray the cost because, you know, we're sending quite a number of people across the country to launch a balloon with all the shipment and everything else. So the University of Wyoming has the oldest, if I'm not mistaken, and one of the largest um, weather balloon research stations in the nation. Uh, they launch much larger balloons than we launch to study the atmosphere on a regular basis. And so we'll get a tour of their facility. So this is a great opportunity for the students. Perfect match. They also have an extremely active um, sustainable energy research group and this one of our sub topics or issues that we want the students to be exposed to is sustainable energy so they're touring the research facilities when they get out there the sustainable energy research facilities the atmospheric um, science research facilities such that they now have a complete picture not just them launching the balloon but what other scientists really do some of the balloons they launch are three or four stories high large huge balloons and hopefully the students will get an opportunity to see some of the kinds of things that they do it rounds the whole picture out and I really want to thank University of Wyoming because they're picking up a lot of the cost for housing etc because science is not like, well, you know, you're going to do this, 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 and you're going to get these results, and you're going to publish this. Science is like, you've got to try it. If it works, great. You can publish. If it doesn't, you've got to retool and do it again. But I'm excited about launching the balloon. I, I was really excited. You know, I just don't want the termites to explode, you know, when they come down. Then we won't have any data. 
you know, or we'll just have mesh on the camera. So my prediction is they're going to have a great opportunity to experience how science works. Whether the wind conditions are just right or whether um, the atmosphere or the jet stream takes it 100 miles away or whether it comes right back down where they predict, we'll see. And, but what I will predict is that they will have an exciting time in learning how science works. Um, my name is Don Roth, R-O-T-H, and I'm the Deputy Director for the School of Energy Resources at the University of Wyoming. And I'm also representing the Strategic Diversity Initiation um, uh, initiatives committee that uh, is a central part of the university's effort to improve uh, diversity in relations uh, with other institutions in the uh, in the United States. This program developed as, as a result of some mutual uh, relations that we were establishing with Morehouse uh, College and it was a great opportunity to make connections and allow uh, the, the Morehouse group to come to the University of Wyoming to be a part of this balloon launch. Our atmospheric science department well, we is, is very no. uh, is very uh, 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 committed and and very uh, involved in in various balloon launches and so it seemed like an an excellent opportunity for uh, Morehouse and University of Wyoming to collaborate together. Then the the group will. Uh, go to the University of Wyoming, will will uh, give certain uh, uh, overviews of the university, opportunities for graduate education, uh, specialization uh, programs such as atmospheric science, uh, a lot of the STEM disciplines, the energy uh, resources focus that we have at the University of Wyoming, and uh, we'll be able to discuss some mutual uh, exchange options and possibilities and so forth, and the students will learn about the different uh, um, degrees and, and opportunities at the University of Wyoming. During the first two weeks of the summer science program, the robotics team learned how to build and program robots. This team was given the specifications needed by biomaterials and graphene teams. The end result was an original, highly innovative robotic device. My name is Steve Alford and I'm from the robotics group. This is the robot that we uh, designed and this is the final product. The idea of the robot is um, this right here is for biomaterials for their lab. The idea is once it reaches certain feet, this will open for them, so they can uh, so the uh, their materials can um, react in in the atmosphere. Constraints are six pounds per payload, and this would stood would stood the six pounds. This is five point seven seven pounds actually, and with the with the camera, the camera is going to view both the arms unscrewing the caps. And basically what it's doing is these uh, materials are going to react in the atmosphere and we're trying to record what it does. This seemingly daunting so that's the engineering of the task for and undergraduate pre-freshman students was easily accomplished um, with the Lego Mindstorm robotic we're kit. We're running uh, in through the building. Um, the hose is going to, we're going to connect it up to the neck of the balloon and inflate the balloon with helium. The robotics team worked with the launch and recovery team to construct and program a robot that would open and close vials containing the research materials. Computer screen and it'll actually show a map with where the balloon is. Hello, I'm William Dula. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, and I'm on the design, launch, and recovery team. Today, we are going to set up the uh, harp. We're going to launch it, and then later, as well, while everyone else is touring the University of Wyoming, the design launch recovery team is going to go out and find it. This is actually tied to the LED. 
be done by students. I'm there to help give them assist if they need it, but I'd rather have the students do the whole thing. Fill the balloon with helium, release the balloon, uh, track it as it flies, recover it. I'll just go along and enjoy the walk, but I want the students to do the recovery. My name is Davis Turner, and I'm representing Morehouse College and the HBCU at Pre-Freshman Program. This right here is the HARP platform, and we'll be launching into the stratosphere in a few moments here. And while it's in the stratosphere, we will be conducting several experiments. One being a lithium air battery, second being biomaterials, third being graphene, fourth being termites. And it took a lot of ingenuity and creativity, but we're finally here, and I'm really excited. And then when the balloon is released, it all goes up in one nice fashion. Once it goes down on the ground, the telemetry usually cannot reach over uh, two or three miles away from where that impact site is. So you need to be close with your recovery team so that when it comes down, they know where it's coming down and can get close enough to get a, t a signal from that. Robots. Once you get there, usually you can't drive in to where you need to pick it up, so then you have to use a handheld GPS system. And you take the coordinates from your uh, last read from the unit uh, as it was going down, where you think it is, and then you try to hike in and find it. Did you do the conversion? Because okay. they were in the wrong units. As far as fee goes? No, in terms of, <laughs> so you have to have degrees and then you have to have minutes. And he's got okay. decimal. Will. Will. Uh, the satellite beacon acts in a different manner. It, uh, because it uses a satellite, can broadcast up to the satellite if you can see it and then give you a location. But that's not usually um, readily available in the field. It's a backup in case you can't find it with a primary system. Are we close? I think we are, but I'm not sure. We lost the signal on the uh, antenna, and so. Uh, All right. He's reading again, guys. Okay. Okay. So we're getting the signal again. Yes. Okay. Good. Ha <laughs> ha. Good deal. Forty-one point three nine nine eight four, and then negative one hundred five point one seven eight zero two. Yes, I can also start up. I've got my computer, uh, our department laptop here. And okay. I have a uh, GPS puck, puck GPS oh, okay. with a street atlas. So we can start that up too. Okay. Okay, and that'll give us our location exactly. That way, if uh, uh, if uh, you lose the Stratostar high altitude balloon kit used in this harp experience creates the foundation for the adrenaline charge edge of space learning experience. This kit contains the high altitude balloon, a software program that allows students to predict where the balloon's payload will land, a GPS tracking system that allows students to track the balloon in real time and recover its payload as it lands, video cameras that record the flight, as well as a series of other instrumentation that records altitude, atmospheric pressure, humidity, and temperature. We also have another issue that occurs in our balloon launch. There's no backup of the data that's collected from the research projects on board, so it broadcasts that information down to our, uh, our computer system that has an antenna on the vehicle, and as it travels, it collects not only the GPS data, it's also collecting the research data. Data through satellite. 
works with GPS, and this is our, our backup, the beacon module. And we'll connect that in and we'll get this figured out. After the balloon is sent up and after they recover the, the data, then they have two weeks now to go and analyze the data that they received, as well as to develop PowerPoint presentations and poster presentations that they will present at the end of the program um, conference, where we'll invite the president of Morehouse and we'll invite faculty and staff and other students that may be interested, such that they may present their scientists, as scientists do at scientific conferences, and get that opportunity to see the completion of a whole project. Our solar four solar cells were safety landed, and uh, we got the data. So these days we are analyzing the data. Okay. We are lucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, the results from Ryomi um, was a little disheartening because we lost the robot. It was unfortunate that the robot was lost with our actual biomaterials. So at this point, it's inconclusive on what the after portion of our research would be. However, it shows the students that this is a learning experience, that this is science and things happen, and it's not just a cookie cutter type of lab where, where if you do this, you're going to get this result. The HOP project continues in the fall from the perspective that is that in February, the National Science Foundation, along with the AAAS, the American Association for the Advancement of Science, has an undergraduate conference for minority students that present their research. So it will continue in that the students that get good results and that do a good job this summer, we'll, we will travel them, usually the conference is in Washington, D.C., we'll travel them to Washington and they'll present their data at that point. Outside of that, the next project will be next summer where students from that come in the next year will pick up where these students left over. There's memory from what they did before from the PowerPoints and from the posters. Students should take advantage of this program because it allows them to get first-hand exposure to actually doing experiments. So it's a really good experience for students just to come in, get new exposure to the environment at Morehouse College, work with professors, work with other students, and just being able to come back and present their research at the end of the summer. Be meeting science majors in their freshman year, forming strong relationships. If you can give a student an opportunity to see that I really love this, the probability of them being successful is much, much greater. And basically speaking, our, old, our whole objective of this pre-freshman bridge summer science program is to bridge them into college, allow them to have a successful college matriculation, and then go on to get a PhD and become real scientists. This is an individual or a student who's really interested in going ahead in science. This offers him an opportunity to really get involved instead of waiting until possibly a graduate program. If for nothing else, it teaches them teamwork and it teaches them leadership. We've done research in the past to show that these are outcomes that we actually see. One, the students get a real understanding of how science really works and the nature of science. Two, they get an understanding of the interdisciplinary nature of science because you've got to have a design and, and launch recovery team. You've got to have a robotics team to create the devices to open and close the experiments for the graphing team or the other teams. So they understand how to work together in a large research project or the interdisciplinary nature of science, just as if you were setting up a space shuttle with different individuals with different missions. Well, some of the improvements that we've been seeing year by year in our pre Freshman Bridge Summer Science Program has come from assessment one of what we're doing and then shifting and altering the program as we go along. So it's a gradual process of us studying the students. We give them lots of assessments. We have an external evaluator. We pay quite heavily to be able to let us know what we're doing. And as we see things that work, we incorporate it or make it better. And we see things that don't work, we drop it out. 